matter what. I thought he called a great game. We as coaches, we can't make, we can't go out there and make the plays, right? It's a two-way street. So, you know, you guys can sit here and point the finger all you want, and that's fine. Point it right at me. I can take it. Okay. I can take it. So, whatever you want to ask me, say whatever, write, go ahead. Well, you heard it from Coach Peterson himself. It is a rough time, and there's a lot of blame to go around. Welcome into Teal the Show. We've got Frank Frangie in the building as we try and make sense of what has been a uh, bad, bad start to the season for the Jaguars. Frank, this is uh, almost inexplicable. Uh, definitely not what the expectation was going into the year, but uh, it's the reality now. Yeah, yeah. It's t you, you wonder all the time, Jamal, what's harder, getting blown out and looking really bad like you did against the Bills or having these three close games that one play either way, and you could have won all three games. Yesterday's game was hard. I thought they outplayed the Texans for much of the game. I thought they had a good plan. I thought they executed. Yet at the end of the game, they needed one more play to finish it off. And has been the case this year. They couldn't come up with the one more play, and they wind up losing the game. And then you see frustrations all around, frustrations with the coaches, the players, everybody. I think that happens when the losses continue to build, particularly when they're losses that almost didn't happen. I think that's where this team is. Definitely a close game, definitely a close loss, but a loss nonetheless. Let's talk about some of the mistakes we saw out on the yeah. field, Frank. Um, th missed opportunities left and right, uh, but definitely Tank Bigsby breaks a big run, gets you down to the four-yard line. Looks like you're going to take a stranglehold on this game, only for a, a four and out right there inside the five-yard line. Not, not exactly an ideal situation, but those are the sorts of missed opportunities that cost you football games. You asked me on Teal the Show early in the season, maybe before the season even began, Jamal, What's my biggest concern on this football team? Mm -hmm. And I told you at the time, my biggest concern is, can they, can they convert third and short and fourth and short? I thought it kept them out of the playoffs last year. If they can make a yard in Nashville, they win the AFC South for two years in a row. They could not make the yard. You remember Trevor tried to jump over the top on the quarterback. Snake couldn't get there. They lose the game, and they don't win the division. I thought that hurt them last year. I thought it hurt them early this year on a sweep to Travis Etienne, and I thought, and they didn't get it. And yesterday again, Third and short, fourth and short, they couldn't get it done. My belief is, the concern is, they're not physical in the interior of that line. Everybody's trying, everyone's doing the best they can, but they're not physical in the interior of that line, and they have not been able to solve. You can talk play calling and this and that and Trevor all you want, and there's, and there's tr truth to all of it. But if you can't make third in a yard and fourth in a yard in this league, it's hard to win games, and that is the Achilles heel of this football team, and it continues to haunt them. You got to be able to trust those big guys up front to get you the yard you need. So that was definitely a missed opportunity. I mean, there were other points that were left out there on the field. You mentioned, Trevor, there were a couple of misses yeah. along the way. Brian Thomas Jr. on a double move. Christian Kirk opened down the field. A, a third and short to Travis Etienne. Just a few erratic passes. Overall, I mean, I thought Trevor played a solid day, but those misses are the ones that will definitely stick out to folks because those are points that were left out there. Yeah, I think, look, it blames all the way around. Um, look, Doug made a point. It's a fair point. Um, they've got to call good plays. The players have to execute those plays. Everybody's in this together, and I think that was his point, and, and, that, and that's an accurate point. Trevor missed some throws yesterday. He would tell you that. Uh, the, the long ball, the double move to Brian Thomas Jr., that's a touchdown. The long corner route to Christian Kirk, that's a touchdown. There have been plays there. There's other times they didn't come up with the right play. I think everybody's in it together, and when you start struggling, this is what happens. When you get close, remember, they were 9-8 and eight two years in a row. They were close last year to having back-to-back -back division titles. They've been close in three of the four games this year. I'm not making excuses. They're 0-4. You are what your schedule says you, what your record says you are, and this is an 0-4 football team. I know that. But they're so close to, and I think that's why you see the frustration in press conferences, in the locker room, in the media, on social media. I think you see the frustration because this team had high expectations, and they're close to being better, but they're still an 0-4 football team. And they were so close, and now it feels like they are so far. We'll talk about what maybe they need to do to see if they can get this thing flipped around coming up next when Teal the Show returns. All right, welcome back here into Teal the Show, Frank. Uh, look, there's only been one team that's been able to turn around this sort of uh, yeah. hole that the Jaguars have dug themselves into and make it to the playoffs. It was a team back in the 90s, the San Diego Chargers at the time, turned it around, went on a run the rest of the year. If the Jaguars are going to do that, it's a, definitely a tough road and one that uh, there's a reason why only one team in NFL history has done it, but it, it technically is possible. Uh, changes would have to be starting being made right this moment. Yeah, a couple things. Number one, I think that's the last thing they need to think about right now. I think they need sure. to think about, right now you need to think about beating the Colts. I, I think 
caught up in we've all done it. Well, the record will be this, and they have these games. That's a winnable game. That's a, I think they need to get away from that and try and win a game. Uh, right now, this team needs to win a football game. Forget all the rest. They need to beat the Indianapolis Colts. I'll say it again. I think somehow they've got to solve third and short and fourth and short. I think the play calling was pretty good in that game. I, I think the play calling was good. Trevor's got to start hitting those throws. I think he's going to. We, 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 we notice the throws he doesn't hit. We forget the fact that he threw two touchdown passes, and he made some really good throws in that game too. I don't think Trevor's far off. I think Trevor's going to be okay. But he's got to start hitting those throws. But I think they've got to solve the physicality inside. You've got – when the Philadelphia Eagles – found that tush push that everyone talked about and when, when third and one and fourth and one was automatic they wound up in a Super Bowl that's what winds up happening if you get that part figured out it's the biggest challenge for their football team now there's other things you can do better again Trevor's got to hit some of those plays uh, they probably they've got to I like the fact that they targeted Christian Kirk a bunch they had not been doing that I like the fact that they continue to target Brian Thomas Jr. they need Evan Ingram back in the worst way so there's some things that have to get better. I think their secondary and Ventral Miller and, and, and Monteric Brown, Ventral Miller, the linebacker, Monteric Brown, the cornerback, played so well yesterday. So there's good signs, but they've got to fix third and short. I keep saying it. That's what they got to fix. All right, you kind of got to the silver lining, maybe some of the positives. It's not all yeah. doom and gloom. One of those young guys that played out was Ventrell Miller. Got an opportunity, shows up, former Gator, and he's, got, he's making plays left and right in the backfield. He looks like a guy that... I was at least one of the folks that questioned when the Jaguars drafted him. Frank said, no, he's a player. And, and you were right. Yeah, he's a really good player. And I saw that at Florida. Look, they've drafted guys at Florida here. And I'm a Florida guy. They've drafted at Florida that I didn't like the fact that they drafted them. Uh, I, C.J. Henderson and Dante Fowler and Taven Bryan. I could give you a list of guys. And when they drafted him on our draft shot, I said, I don't know. That one surprised me. Ventro Miller's one, and I told you, I like the fact they drafted him because he's explosive. He's their fastest linebacker. He's their most explosive linebacker. Ventro's got to prove he can stay on the field. He was hurt at Florida a lot, and he was hurt when he got here. But he's got a chance to be a really good player. So I think Ventro Miller, I think I, I, you got to leave him out there. No matter who comes back healthy, I think he's got to be a starter for you. I think Monteric Brown is playing at a great level. I mean, he, he's been out there now in a very young secondary, and a lot of the veteran guys are hurt. He continues to answer the bell. So they found something in those guys. There's something there, Jamal, with this football team. Uh, I worry about the edge. They're not getting much push outside. Josh Hines Allen got hurt yesterday, but neither he nor Trayvon really affected the pocket very much yesterday. So they've got to do better there. The defensive line overall has got to play better. But there's some bright spots with some young defenders, no question. Yeah, uh, another bright spot. I think we've seen it at this point over the course of the early games. Brian Thomas Jr., they got a guy with him. I would target him 12 to 15 times a game. I would target him. that sort of credit. Malik Neighbors is getting that. He he's, is? Getting, he's getting 12 to 15 targets a, day, a game. I would do that. I would attack through the air, and I would really target uh, Brian Thomas Jr. I think there's something special about him. I think he's a special player. I think, there's, I think he knows how to play. He's a mature player. The double move, again, they missed him. But the double move that would have been a touchdown was magnificent, and he does that every week. It's not a one-time thing. He's that good of a player. He does it that often. Uh, there's something special with Brian Thomas Jr. Listen, they've got good players. That's what's so confounding about this. It looks like they should be better than an 0-4 football team. You knew the first four games were going to be tough, but they've let a couple get away, and that's what's kind of grinding on everybody. All right, Frank, uh, we've got to kind of come back to the reality. It's not all sunshine and rainbows yeah. right now. It almost feels like we're staring down the barrel of a rebuild on this thing. Just how long is the leash before there has to be a decision made on this football team? There were expectations. Shad oh. said it before the year. He wasn't misquoted. He thought this was the best team in franchise history, only to see yeah. this. Yeah, you're, 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 you're a quarter of the way through the season, so I think you have to see how it plays out. I'll say this before. There's been three winning seasons in the last 15 years here, and Doug Peterson's authored two of those. He's never had a bad full year here. So I don't think you can pull the plug on a guy that's won both, time, both years he's been here. I, I know the narrative now is blow it up and, because that's what happens in sports. That's not just a Jaguar fan thing. When things start struggling, let's fire the coach because once you fire the coach, everything's better. Well, it doesn't really work that way. I think Shot will be patient here. I think you got to see how it plays out. There's a lot of games left. There's 13, 13 games, a lot of games. Uh, once upon a time, an NFL season was 14 games. So there's a lot of games left. I don't think you pull the plug on anything now. But I do think you consider personnel changes. I think you got to get more physical. Uh, you've got to, you only play 11 at a time. You got 53 on your roster. 
I think you have to consider some personnel changes, and that's what I would look at if I was the Jaguars. The tough spot they find themselves in is what personnel changes do you do you consider? Because, I mean, Cam Robinson, Anton Harrison, yeah. we were a little critical of them early in the season, but they stepped up as a challenge against the Texans. I can tell you, you never heard Will Anderson's name, yeah. and you never heard Daniil Hunter's name. That proves that those two tackles played pretty well. I might look at the interior of the offensive line. I might try and figure out something along the interior of the defensive front. I might try and get a little more creative with the edge. I think there's some things you can do differently. That I think they've got to do. I think they've got, again, Trevor missed some throws, but he's going to hit those throws. You're good at quarterback. Okay, news bulletin, you're okay at quarterback. The receivers are going to be fine. Now that Christian Kirk's back in the swing, Evan Ingram's going to be back. I think he's close. So I think you're okay there. I worry about the interior of the lines, and I think you've got to figure out what you do there. All right, Frank, next game's against the Indianapolis Colts. Back at home at the bank. Uh, there's a streak going on yeah. against the Colts, and I know that the Jaguars won't worry about that streak, but just how important is it for them to keep that streak intact and not take another L? This is a, yeah. a, a, bi a big game for more than one reason. you got to get a win. Yeah. I, and before I was saying, well, if you win this, and then you go to London, and then you get two winnable games, and you have this, and you have this, just forget one. all that. You need to win a game. You need, uh, what, what is Matthew Driscoll, the coach, the basketball coach at UNF, say? Mm -hmm. Our goal is to go 1-0. Our goal is to go 1-0. Their goal needs to be to go 1-0. More than anything else they can talk about do, they've got to find a way to win a game. Don't worry about what happens next. Don't worry about what happens in London. Don't worry about who you're playing in London. Don't worry about who you play when you come back. Don't worry about the division. Don't worry about the standings. you got to find a way to win a game it's more critical now because of all of it the mood the feeling in the locker room the level of confidence the fan base social media find a way to win a game and they got to win that they've got to win this week against the indianapolis colts they got to go one and zero every day and it doesn't help that it's going to be throwback day so there's going to yep. be a lot of fans wearing those throwback jerseys tom coughlin is going into yeah. the pride of the jaguars yeah. so on our next teal the show we're going to be talking a little bit about the old ball coach maybe you've been here from him and a couple of the jaguars that played for him it's going to be a fun week as we get a chance to honor tom coughlin uh, and, and send him into the pride of the Jaguars the right way. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us here on Teal the Show tonight. Thank you for Frank for being here. Good night, everybody, and go Jags.